and so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do what I consider to be a broadcast. Um, this broadcast has to do with uh, some of the things that I have found um, in my program that I use on my iPad. One of the processes that I use in order to do my reading for the day and that what I consider my reading is just my ability to stay on, to on top of what's going on in the, the educational technology scene and what's going on in online learning. So one of the things that I do each morning is I read on my iPad a uh, whole pile of different articles that are brought to me through a program that's called uh, Zitty, spelled Z-I-T-E. It's a great app and what it does is it learns what I'm looking for and what I'm interested in very quickly and uh, sends those directly to my iPad. So every morning when I sit down I read about, uh, I read through about 15 to 20 articles. One of the things that I really like about that program is it does allow me the ability to then send articles that I'm interested in to the uh, Twitter feed. And so for my Twitter feed, I then take those uh, those articles and I put them into my blog, which uh, my blog is my central focus for most of my social networking. And so my blog is where I put anything that I would like my staff to see because it's my method of communicating with my staff. And from my blog, then it goes through buffers and through feeds into the other social networking tools that uh, people may be following me on. So one of the articles that came out yesterday that I added to my Twitter feed and I will add to my blog using a uh, an app, uh, plugin, excuse me, for my Chrome was an article that says, "Want students to succeed, let them fail." One of the things that I find real interesting is that our, for some reason our school system has got to the point where we do not uh, stop people from failing within our school division. We stop them from doing that. So what we, we tend to do is we do what's called social passes. We do everything we possibly can to allow a student to succeed and to move forward. And uh, you'll find all sorts of research out there that states that what this does is it dummies down the school division. Um, the school division marks. It dummies down uh, schools in general so that we are now not allowing students the opportunity to fail. Some of the greatest lessons I ever learned in my lifetime came from me failing miserably. And then from that, then what I do is I tend to learn a lot <laughs> because I do look back on what I've done and what I didn't do and what was effective and what wasn't. And so the ability to fail is something that we should always strive to do and try to do well. And so, um, this article starts, it was written by a lady named Liz Dewar, and she starts her articles by saying, how many times have you heard the mantra, failure is not an option, the need to succeed, whatever the cost permeates our societies, and schools are no exception. There was some research done in the Journal of Experimental Psychology that concludes kids may perform better in school if teachers and parents sent the message that failing is a normal part of learning. And this is something that I sincerely believe in because a student needs to fail once in a while in order to, uh, to succeed. There will be no life lesson that they will learn better than failure. And when you get out into the real world and into, uh, into a working situation, you're going to have to learn how to deal with failure. And if we don't ever give them the opportunity to do that, they'll never ever uh, learn from, from the, their failures. Our cyber school that we built was based on a trial and error system, which if we were not comfortable with the, the concept of failing, we never would have got the opportunity to build the cyber school into what it is today. You try something, if it fails, you adapt it and you make it a little better, and if that fails, you add something else to make it a little better, and so on, and you just keep going until you get it to the point where you're quite happy with what you've got. And that's a, that's a method of going forward. There's nothing wrong with that. Another article that I found today talks about is Paul Martin talking about giving schools a failing grade in history. Now, this article, uh, I always found, like, history to me was never one of my top subjects. I have heard from many people that it's important that um, we allow students to study history so we don't make the same mistakes. And I do understand that concept, but I also think that uh, by studying history, you tend to not try anything new. You tend to build on what's happened before, and so the truly unique 
uh, thought process is kind of lost because then it's just a, a building upon someone else's research. And I think all the, the great thinkers of our time were great thinkers because they didn't follow the thought of the day or they didn't follow what has done in the past and they are the ones who actually contributed greatly to the uh, the way our world is set up. Um, the other one that came up that I found also very interesting was down in the United States we're having a, an, an issue with uh, Obama's method of school reform strategies and um, one of the things that they are very they're screaming about all over the place is that he is uh, trying to force school reform onto teachers without actually allowing teachers to have any input and that the government and big businesses are the ones that are driving how schools are changing and uh, there's an article that I have put onto my Twitter feed that also talks about that which again is I always like to look at the United States because I find that a lot of the things that happen in the United States are very good indicators as to what may happen here and another thing that they're trying to do down in the states is to nationalize education and come up with a national agenda or a national curriculum that can be applied to every school all across the the country and I don't know whether that's a good idea or whether that's a bad idea it's just an interesting one that they would have a standardized curriculum um, for me curriculum can either be a good thing because it, it helps the weaker teachers and allows them to teach what needs to be done but it also is very handcuffing for the teachers who are very uh, creative and would like to explore um, an individualized approach to education. Um, that for me, there's a few other articles that you'll see in my uh, in my blog. Uh, there's a, an art article on parents tips for a digital age which is kind of interesting to read if you're a parent but for now this is my broadcast on uh, my articles for the day. I hope you enjoyed it.